The Monterey Bay Poetry Consortium presents Heidi McGurin and Cynthia Bryant, recorded live via Zoom on Sunday, February 13th, 2022. Well, welcome this afternoon on this beautiful early spring midwinter day. Uh, it's sunny and bright uh, here in Monterey County. Uh, the weather's gorgeous, uh, unnaturally so, but uh, it's something still to be grateful for. This is our 22nd Zoom-based reading for the Monterey Bay Poetry Consortium. So we're coming up on two years of this. Uh, and uh, who knows how long it's going to go. I, I think we're going to, in some fashion or other, Kent, who's a fellow host, uh, is on. And he and some of the others of us are going to want to get together to figure out how to keep alive this ability to communicate uh, and share our work uh, virtually via Zoom. And we don't know how things are going. I mean, there's Omicron, I guess it's fading. There's now something, I think it's BA2, um, which is here or coming or whatever, and heaven knows what else is being cooked up in the Petri dish of all the unvaccinated people in this world. And I guess now white-tailed deer uh, on Staten Island are also uh, Omicron uh, infected. So who knows? Um, we've got mask restrictions coming off here in California on Tuesday but the CDC says to keep them in place. So it's a roller coaster, it's up and down. And uh, that's why these readings each month is so wonderful because it gives us a chance to step back and get away from the, the ups and downs, the turmoil and a lot of the rubbish that's going on in the world. And what you get to do here through this reading and all of our readings is share poetry with wonderful poets uh, who help us to see things through the lens of poetry and feel and enjoy and experience. And that's something very precious uh, in these times. The Monterey Bay Poetry Consortium, which is the group bringing this to you, is an unaffiliated group of affiliated, unaffiliated poets. Uh, we have nothing formal, but we are just a gathering, a collection of poets who like poetry, love poetry. Our roots go back decades uh, to the National Writers Union here in Monterey County. Uh, and even before that. Uh, we are um, vibrant and growing, and it's great, uh, great to have you here with us. We have a Facebook page. If you'd like to like us on Facebook, please like us. Uh, we don't do much there except post things about uh, readings coming up and also uh, images and uh, so forth after a reading. And it gives people a chance who, who are on there to say that they like a reading or don't, I guess, although we haven't had that. Uh, so please don't. Um, we also have, as I mentioned, a YouTube channel, and you can get to it by Googling Monterey Bay Poetry Consortium uh, YouTube. And all of our readings, all 21 of our readings are on there. And uh, as my grandmother used to say, we have gotten better as we've improved. And we have, um, we've upped the production skills a bit, and uh, we've improved the uh, quality of things. But it's there. And uh, please subscribe if you'd like, and then you'll receive updates. Well, today we have two wonderful poets who are gifted and who are gracing us with return engagements. Uh, they've read for us before, and uh, they are, uh, they're ready to go. Our first reader is going to be Heidi McGurin, uh, followed then by Cynthia Bryant. And so what I'd like you to do is just, if you have your wine poured, okay, good. If you haven't, go pour it. Uh, or a cup of tea or whatever you like to drink while you uh, enjoy some poetry. If you've got a snack, get that, but make sure your mic is off so you don't, we don't hear the crunching of your potato chips or whatever. And uh, just sit back and enjoy. Okay, first of all, then I'm going to introduce our first reader, Heidi McGurin, who's a dear, wonderful friend. Uh, and she's an imaginative writer, a painter, and a photographer. And she's a whole lot more than that. Uh, Heidi graduated from the Foxcroft School in Middleburg, Virginia. She attended Finch College in New York and the California School of Fine Arts, which is now known as the San Francisco Art Institute. Heidi's paintings have evolved into mixed media interpretations, and I would urge you to like Heidi on Facebook because she does post images of her paintings from time to time, and they're wonderful. Heidi was honored by Congressman Sam Farr, uh, when she presented her Cuban exhibition on Capitol Hill. She actually had her photographs there in the Capitol. 
uh, and she read one of her poems, First Impressions of Havana, to the US Congress. Heidi has spent 50 plus years traveling in and through Latin America, Cuba, Haiti, Brazil, Mexico, Guatemala, the Inca lands of Peru, Cusco, Bolivia, Chile. And as she's done this, she has photographed, she's written, She's also uh, had some of her work been done for Los Medicos Voladores, the flying doctors. Uh, she's a remarkably gifted poet, and now we get to hear her. So Heidi, over to you. Thank you, Bob. Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming, showing up. I'd like to thank Bob Nielsen, John Lowey, and Jennifer Lagier Felguth for your encouragement. Thank you, Monterey Bay Poetry Consortium for this invitation, which is truly an honor for me. I'd like to say I have two books in blurb.com in the bookstore. One is called Havana Dream about Cuba, and one is called Poetic Landscapes. My website is heidi McGurin. Dot squarespace dot com. Thank you. My first poem, The Theater. The lights soften, throwing a golden light across the hum of the crowd. Below, watching a stage in front, deep scarlet curtains of velvet the old fashioned thick velvet with golden ruffles edging across and along, pulled by invisible cords, by invisible men hidden in the shadows. Children sat close together holding tiny candles in their small palms, their tiny faces flickering with dancing firelight, waiting, waiting for a surprise. A face painted in powder and glowing in iridescent sparkle appeared between the folds of the thick, rouged, ruby, heavy curtains. Then a long arm with delicate fingers beckoned the children who sat by now enraptured and curious in the front row. A music like a subtle symphony of perfume slowly enchanted the air and the quiet, the softened quiet of a peacefulness. The curtain suddenly lifted from various points on invisible cords, high above the stage. Graceful bodies shimmered in random abandon, stretching and sliding through silvery air lightened by snowflakes filtering down from the other wear. The music seemed to control the dialogue. Carnations of many colors and sizes flew through the air, their scent following their flight. An unearthly garden appeared out of nowhere and grew itself on the ground behind the mysterious curtain with the golden edges. Each flower and tree appearing had a splendor of its own. The light lit up the faces of each child whose expectation shone in their eyes. Quarantine. She was running in an unusual direction for her as she never thought of going that way before. Her heart was pounding. Her feet moved invisibly through the hot sand. Her feet were so hot, the more she ran, her red dress with light shimmering veils of underskirts seemed to glow to transparency and her soft fleshy body revealed curvatures of lines and movements from another time. Deep past through waterfalls of memory, a musical mystery began to hum from her pores exuding a sound unfamiliar in this day of ours. So having been suffocated by a faster pace until now, older, memorable, dark, earthquake, sad, 
where people hovered low beneath indigo faded glow of old worn beauties, surviving throughout abuse somehow. Who speaks for them? Are we vanishing into a dusty time of uncertainty humming in the air? Witch and her magic rocks. Not long ago, she flashed through fingers in a sign as I photographed her against the bluest of waves, crashing gently against the secret beach of sand, each grain a tiny stone. The musical sounds of the crashing of waves, like timpani drum rolls coming in, gentle breeze sounds pulling the salt water back, deep down back into the mother body of the ocean. Point Lobos guards its secrets in subtle sounds when you close your eyes. Reminded of a hidden faraway lake, pyramid lake, whose tiny grains of sand were minute seashells of endless variety, spilling wonder through my fingers. Water falling home to earth, the sulfur water bubbled and sizzled and threw streaming rivers into the air. Quiet there, the stars flew across the heavens and seemed to race to somewhere beyond imagination. She, the woman with the flashing fingers, searched deep in her small shiny bag, held together by ribbons and came up with two rocks. One larger, one quite small, names I forget. Smoothness remembered that hold magic dreams and lie near my pillow where I sleep. Green weeds of medicine she pressed into my hands, giving me energy, reminding me of the woman who, when banned from her village, suddenly the river dried up, the animals disappeared, the plants all died and the rocks grew hot and dry in the burning sun. The people suffered so. In a dream, I found her and brought her back home. The earth shook itself out of its turmoil and slowly began to unravel itself and bring hope and beauty. Water began to fall from the sky trembling in the magic of drums of ecstasy as children danced around and women let down their long, dark hair. Wintry air is sharp and crisp. Wintry air is sharp and crisp. Leaves of autumn colors dangle and hang until a gentle breeze creates a fluttering of colors whose whispers float and find their way onto a cooler ground, creating patterns of mosaic like stained glass windows whose light filters down and comforts those who humble themselves, letting go of all thoughts and anguish that harbored in their beings. Soft feelings, powdery warm scents of many candle flames burning at once in tiny deepest blue sapphire glass cups, ruby flows from similar, the air smells of mystery, The light filters through the tall, graceful windows of leaded glass, throwing curves, and curious eyes follow the dance of their rhythms across polished golden wood and books with their message, messages tucked carefully away. Music floats through the air, dark, deep drum beats haunt. Looking into ourselves deeper, we remember things Perhaps our parents never told us 
about the cotton picked by tired hands, food grown for masters, children whose little eyes watched and wondered. Each face holds deep mystery, some more restless than others, some wrinkled from the winds of life, hands, feet, faces, all tell our stories. Deep inside we bristle to relieve ourselves of often deep burdens we held inside of us for so long. Often we are drawn to sad things, pain and suffering we had no idea about. Feelings unknown before fill our bodies with energy like slow burning fiery flames sparking us to action. Risk it, baby. Take hold of the reins. Don't wrap the rope around your wrist. Hold it in big loose loops. Let your body fill with the en energy of a wild young horse whose eyes trust you and whose body is so powerful and determined, pulling you in his direction, not yours. Learn from the ones who's come who've come before us with deeper knowledge of how to handle the twists and unexpected turns and heavy bumping into your side, reminding me of who is in charge of the wind, of a young horse, of the heavenly puffy white and thunderous clouds that float across the sky, of time that passes invisibly, not me. It smells like jasmine around me as I sit and dream of long ago, a memory of Paris in a golden time, croissant and marmalade, cobblestones meandering, meandering along the river before a light rain. He was tall and skinny, I thought, his arms loaded with old weathered books he'd collected, it seemed, from the river stalls of gentlemen poets with baggy clothes and pointed elbows. Packed shoes spoke of rough wanderings. Penniless pockets, questionable socks, yet a colorful kerchief poking out of his breast pocket. His hair was long and shaggy, hanging loosely covering one eye. He walked carelessly, it seemed, shuffling his feet, tapping a sound curiously on the stones, silver taps creating sounds of symbols that held by dancing fingers sparked electric fire as if sparklers glowed and hissed and fascinated, especially the children. I too was enchanted. This mysterious man wore a felted hat cocked in a mood that delighted my eyes. His gait made me wonder and entranced. I began to follow him. Music came from nowhere and filled the air with often lonely and too joyful moods. The trees overhead cast breezy shadows all below on the pathways and cool air from the river soothed my body, eased my troubles. Smells of fresh bread, crusty and inviting in appearance, distracted me. The women near the river ruddy-cheeked and artfully put together, soft, flouncy blouses, flowing skirts, revealing often plump legs and interesting shaped ankles, beckoned with their fingers and their lips, blowing small kisses with strong sounds toward the mysterious dark-eyed mystery man as he passed by, leaning his body in an eye-catching way. His pile of books balanced, it seemed, carefully against his side. One lady, plump and with hair piled up on her head in a disheveled mood, began to run after this curious man, singing soft, shrill songs to him, a desperate plea for his attention. She cried out a little, and in her arms she held close to her breast very tiny pink meringue puffs shaped like small stars, graceful and inviting, not so like she who twisted and turned and ran faster as he with his long legs 
seemed to move very quickly, and suddenly he stopped on a dime. He turned. He caught her by surprise. She saw tears running down his beautiful, old, haunting face. Prayers for lost dreams, artists gathering in darkness. Sadness, young, dancing, feeling safe for moments, underground gatherings, taking chances, innocence and beauty, loved ones, refugees from time in this crazy world, need to express the mystic, to love in the shadows, to cry together for love's lost, Artists gathering in darkness then, now, when, where. I remember dancing behind secret doors in North Beach, New York, the Fillmore, the Art Institute. Angels take chances, often suffer. Dancing and crying and weaving our dreams into smoke. Love remains curled in the ashes of remembrance, sifting the me memories of joy into sorrow. Where have all our children gone when they have felt abandoned? You, me, all those newfound families woven together like a tapestry. Love knows no boundaries. To dance into oblivion. Poof, we are the lucky survivors in this precarious world. Send love and prayers, light candles of forgiveness. Hear songs we never heard before. Give love more. Don't you remember twirling in strange magical places by the sea, underground, high away from the maddening crowds? Ribbons flying of forgiveness, children's feeling unwanted, needing refuge. Beautiful souls, young, gifted, innocent, crying together now. Birds of feathers we. A fresh new blanket of snow. The clothes that bind our bodies somehow tighten ever so as familiarity dresses our creature in moods that repeat themselves, like the air that becomes humid and slows our desire to fly, restricting movement, thought, crushing delight if we let it. The rain pours and brings up remembering our getaways, listening to inner hungers, and choosing to respond to unknown before calls. The world's unknowns that I never slept in, rememberings call me to listen to this silence of my inner child, traveling in my body to foreign unknown before places. I shed my skin inside and out of prejudices that have barnacled my bones without my being aware, like inner aches of resentments angers, frustrations, tangles of woes. A new fresh blanket of snow seems to dissolve in small increments as the new fresh air of fresh vision breathes fresh winds through me, waking refreshed my spirit and comforts me in new, uh, in new unknown ways of possibility. The child in me awakens as new colors, new sounds, new languages tease me jumping me back to an older, familiar, otherworldly body of mine that I lived in long ago, before my mother, one of my grandmothers, certain cousins, superior errors of conditioning, crushed my sense of belonging when I felt fragile, running to faraway places with magical sounding names, far off the beaten path of others telling, I always chose the other path, moving towards a light shining in my direction, pulling me towards the unknown. The pull of the unfamiliar settles in me, a primitive, ethereal, spiritual dusting of possibility, like a fresh new blanket of snow. I remember Mina. I remember Mina saying to me, paint, write, hurry up, 
feeling time being precious, energy, our life blood. I hear myself often telling my wandering eye, use what I have in the back of my mind. I'm, I'm searching for viridian, perylene green, hooker's green, sap green, those tiny squished, almost impossible to squeeze tubes, hard to find, reminders of love. No, not the Indian yellow, but maybe not being afraid of my blues. I can blend and gently twist the colors that I have and create a pasture worthy of lying down in, creating opportunity with all the many imaginative put together thoughts I have scrambled and unraveled from my many cornered life. To not be afraid to let go of the comforts previously known and let my wings open wide, feel them lift high above my mind, feel them soar, use everything in my toolbox of mysterious treats, color them softly and charcoal them violently. Feel the smallest and sharpest bites. Throw them around carelessly and carefully, heavy and light, all flooded with passion. There is a river inside each of us whose current is restless. It moves with time. Time flies. Rocks and mosses sing their stories. And so must we, regardless of the missing pieces. And Heidi, um, per your request, um, this is the two minute warning for you. Okay. The accordion music sings. In the breeze, melodies float in the air. Low voices and trees sway, hugging the fresh air, dancing delight deep into the mountains while children's voices reverberate like flocks of zillions of bird songs dancing all over and inside my skin, reminding me of dusty roads, silvery lakes that shine like golden moons in the sunset. Guitars and high voices sing into the night near fires that spark and hiss. Faces of beauty lit by the firelight revealing pink cheeks, golden faces, and sparkling dark eyes. Songs of another time tell of love, old places, distant horizons. Love songs cradle themselves and lift spirits in a soft, kind, gentle way. Lovers lay into one another, sharing the warmth of their memories deep inside. Warm, rough hands, gentle shoulders, swift, movements at a standstill. Do you remember the magic feel under the trees, under the banana fronds grown high beyond reach of the dark of the night when all the creatures sleep in peaceful surrender? The quick kisses, unexpected tasting of love under the grapevines, but beneath long lavender plumes of hakaranda, Lemon flowers whose scent wakes in the deep night, reminding me of pleasures as jasmine so sweet blooms nearby, sweetening the night air, dissolving the day's efforts, gentling the outer world. Time slows down in the night. The moon appears in various visions, one that fades and swells and blooms, lighting up the sky, the clouds that linger to be close, stretching their glow over mountains, lighting the rivers, the white sands of the beaches that hung, hug the coastlines. A rest comes with the softening of the light, gathering warmth of love in those who need it most, close together. The moon shines bright, a silvery golden light. Horses stand still in quiet barns, sweet smelling pasture close to one another waiting patiently for the love of early morning sunlight, dissolving invisibly the night landscape that held stillness moments before. Thank you. Wonderful, Heidi. Thank, Thank you. you. That, was, uh, that was great. You, I loved your line there toward the end, time slows down in the night. Uh, it slowed down in the last 
minutes that we had here with you. Uh, it, um, it, we, we were transported to a different place. Uh, I loved your imagery. Uh, you talked of um, uh, all those colors that you use when you paint and what you wanted to do was create a pasture worthy of lying down in, uh, which is a great thought. Uh, and uh, I loved your image, we shedding prejudices that have barnacled our, our bones. Uh, that's such a beautiful way to put it. Uh, and you also, that poem about uh, with the gentleman with the hat, you spoke of a memory of parrots in a golden time and croissant and marmalade. Uh, it was, uh, your imagery is rich and, and, and it's in part because you're such a wonderful photographer and painter. And thank you for that. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, I loved your line, love knows no boundaries. Uh, and we'll light candles for forgiveness. And I think uh, what, you've, uh, what you've done is remind us of that and uh, helped us to light some candles in our own hearts too going forward because there's uh, lots of turmoil, there's lots of other stuff in the world, um, but uh, we're artists gathering not behind dark doors in dark rooms, we're gathering in full light thanks to you and appreciate it very much, Heidi, thank you. Sure. Okay, folks, well, the magic continues. Our next poet is Cynthia Bryant. Uh, and uh, Cynthia is also uh, appearing again for us. I don't know how many times before, but uh, she's here with us again. Cynthia was born in Kansas uh, and um, I clicked her magic uh, red shoes and landed in California. Uh, and here she is. She's remarkable for her community work as a poet. Uh, and she's, a, she's a, a dear good friend and fellow poet now in our community. But she was the poet laureate uh, for the city of Pleasanton uh, for two stretches, um, 2005 to 2007, 2011 to 2013. And she also uh, was the poetry director for the Alameda County Fair, which is held there in Pleasanton. We used to go to that when we lived in Oakland. And um, she has read her poetry up and down the state of California. She ran a, mo a Monterey poetry venue known as Last Sunday Fishbowl Poetry that featured two amazing poets and open mic once a month. Uh, she spent most of the pandemic hunkered down with her partner, Alan, who's here. Hi, Alan. And um, uh, also their fur baby uh, in Monterey. I take it that's not a sea otter, huh? No. Okay. Uh, Boston Terrier. A, a what? Boston Terrier. Oh, Boston Terrier. Great dogs. Great dogs. <laughs> Cynthia uh, belongs to a private writers group in the UK that meets once a week, and she's having a fabulous time sharing her work with her pals across the pond. I take it that the time zone difference is not an impediment to your doing that, Cynthia, huh? Well, it's, uh, yeah, they meet at night. And I meet at 11.30 and right before noon, so. <laughs> so that works for you. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, they're probably into their second glass of port, maybe while you're um, connecting with uh -huh. your second cup of coffee. Uh-huh. That's yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Cynthia, cool. thanks for being with us. Over to you now. Okay. Thank you. Um, I spent most of my hankered, hunkered down time um, studying history, our history, and Black American history um, because of some of the programs that had just come out. Uh, I got even more interested, and I realized how very little I knew about our history and 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 our. Um, the black history in our country. So I spend most of the time reading, uh, watching documentaries and movies and everything I could get my hands on about sundown towns and uh, the towns that, that got burned out and taken, taken down and 
uh, just uh, everything to do with everything from reconstruction onward, what, what went on. All the things now that they're trying to keep uh, white people from being uncomfortable hearing um, is what I studied. And I, I haven't written too much about it, but this is uh, Black History Month. So that's kind of where I'm starting is things that I have uh, around that. And this is my own personal history poem. Through the Eyes of a Child. Louisiana, 1958. The first time I saw the sign colored. Posted over the, the top of that water fountain in a downtown department store. Colored, what could that mean? I looked at the fountain. It was white porcelain, just like the other one, a good 10 feet away. I pulled on mama's dress. Mama, what, what does that sign mean? Colored. It means that it is for black folks to drink from. Why do they need a sign for that, mama? So white folks don't drink out of it by mistake. And then as if an afterthought, the blacks are dirty people. They carry germs colored, but not the way mama intended. Her words brought questions about the warm, wonderful woman who cleaned our house. The children I played with, the singer, called Billy, Mama listened to constantly. Of a love supreme, of a love, John Coltrane artist. White supremacy. Am I really superior? How can that be? Thin skinned, milky white, created in absence of love, sold on the black market, I crawled on bloody knees through emotional obscurity to now. As I look about, I see every hue of upright human doings. Flesh tones run the gamut of albino white to the darkest night, happily housed each in the family of humankind. Even color of eyes give little hint of what character of soul peers through. Everyone have sulked in poverty to increments of gilded wealth, kneeled down to many or no gods, experienced joy and loss beside the necessary differences of male to female anatomy and of amorphous others spectrum of all remains the same. Have the, <coughs> excuse me, have the same viscous fluids that maintain life on the inside, loosen each moment when interrupted, erupted to air, flowing on the ground, circle the drain. Our emotions are all that separate, allow self-loathing, hatred of others to divide. We cannot detect from sight that which makes that atom split, makes us destructive to one another. Superiority does not exist in a world where folks were created from stardust with misfit genes that only enhance imperfections. Um, this one's dedicated to Rosa Parks, who went to her final glory, October 24th, 2005. It's called Southern Breeze. Summertime in the South was slow with thick, wet air, smell of magnolia blossoms, fragrant mint grew in yards, Swamp coolers and overhead fans moved like molasses poured over fritters. Black tea, sweet and well iced, 
hushed puppies served with syrup, grits drenched with butter on the side, where sensible white folks with means hired colored women with hungry children for pennies on the dollar to do their bidding. Syndicated Amos and Andy shows played by underemployed black actors brought peals of laughter across the South on black and white televisions in proper white homes where blacks were allowed only as servants. White hooded Klansmen still came by the night, continued to burn crosses, hang bitter crop reminders of hate from white poplar trees that Billy sang about at 78 RPM for whites and blacks to sway to. The time before Martin had his dream that ended in a nation's nightmare. Days when thousands of people marched singing, we shall overcome. And a tired working woman took her place defiantly in history just by sitting down. Okay, too close to see my reflection. Early morning walk, night lights twinkle, reveal magic fairy dust, sparkle in fog amongst ice plants, palms along path leading to the bay. Irregular in its outline, a shadow approaches, stench of urine reaches nostrils, a split second before an overhead lamp uncovers the face, upturned mouth regaled in filth, Road weary rags, half gloved hand, palm shoves forward. I quicken my pace, eyes turn downward, lost in some special treasure hunt that holds attention on the ground ahead. A wailing on the air deepens, wind chill momentarily stops the heart. Slowly now I go, check bearings. Emotional compass, all a spin. I turn to face the familiar, a pitiful sound. Panhandler, a pacing thought, a passing thought. Oh, that was a good way to, <laughs> a passing thought. This is uh, uh, weather, uh, weather coming up. Over. The silent valley town, fingers of darkness slowly reach. A radio crackles. Temperatures into triple digits continue into third full month. No relief in sight. No one left to welcome the cool shadows of night. Big lies. <laughs> Someone's boning up on fascism. <laughs> Feeding folks propaganda. Chanting catchy tripe. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Dumbing down folks. Fed anger. Empty space no longer recognize home. Chaos has been sown. Fear rages through streets, littering pathways, disparities abound. Democracy has greedy hands wrapped around its neck, choking out life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Vote, take to streets, call it out. Resistance is our job. Righteousness, our moral compass, repeat, repeat, repeat. Ah, show us the way. Well, past presidents rasp and rail unheard in their graves, the Constitution is shredded into worthless trash. Rule of law bent out of shape known to the people. Greed, fear, and selfishness has moved into American homes. The golden rule 
ousted into the streets, homeless, without sustenance or hope. I am grateful to the funny animals who show up, who show us how to survive with humor, with compassion for one another of different species. Celebrate being alive in simple daily shenanigans, unaware of the chaotic churning of human stomachs, minds addled with retrogression, heart sick over upsurges in waves of violence by children of children who wait now for their moment at the turnstile of death. I breathe deeply, surrounded by my man and four-footed family, vaguely aware the time to allow the darkness to pass has begun. A debridement through blighted spirit elute sepia back to technicolor, reclaim homeostasis or humanity. This is called uh, Scary Dream. Nah, the sound is distant. Nah, haunting. Nah, it draws closer. Nah, seeing out in pain. Nah, I can't quite make out the species. Nah, a cold sweat pours over me. Nah. I'm awake now, nah, safe in my own bed, nah, my husband by my side, nah, struggling, nah, through his head cold, nah, to breathe. Hmm. My husband just passed out or got off a hero probably now. <laughs> I love true stories. Okay, the love affair. It is hard to know when the love affair began, certainly not in the beginning. At the start, I shunned you like a man avoiding a tax audit. Initially, I had to be coaxed by interested bystander, bystanders to pay you any attention at all. Giving in reluctant, reluctantly, I agreed to court you, to quell the matchmaker's appeals. That first year, I saw you seldom, though I admit now you gave me a peculiar sense of comfort, all the while struggling to keep my distance. By the second year, I'd become accustomed to your company, allowing some intimacy in our encounters while still maintaining my own counsel. Despite my constant vigil, as the years waxed on, you subtly, relentlessly seduced me, whispering your promises, working your charms, until one day to my bewilderment, I found facing each morning changed, charged with an influx of an adrenaline and breathless anticipation. I can no longer exist without you, my beloved poetry. Thank you, Cynthia. That was wonderful. It was, um, I, I loved your line, repeat, repeat, repeat. You know, it's, it's so easy to escape thinking about what needs to be thought about. And that poem reminded us of that. You began by talking about the little girl wondering what that sign above the drinking fountain meant. Uh, it, when you see pictures like that nowadays, it's almost inconceivable that that's how it was, but it was. And, and uh, that little girl was innocent, uh, and what you did was sort of carry her vulnerability through all the poems that you read us with a lot of courage, and uh, thank you for that. 
um, helping us to reclaim homeostasis for humanity, as you, as you said in one of your poems. And you reminded us that superiority does not exist in a world where folks are created from stardust. Uh, that is so very, very true. And uh, thank you for that. I, I just, I was reading this morning a piece about the new governor of Virginia banning the use of critical race theory in schools in Virginia, where, by the way, it's not taught anyway. Um, so that's, yeah. like, that's like setting up a straw man and being a hero by knocking the straw man down. And uh, exactly. that's the kind of stuff that uh, you called our attention to. And thank you so much for that. Uh, your poetry has always been courageous over the years, and you showed more of that for us today. And thank you very much for doing that. Really appreciate it. Welcome. Well, folks, uh, quite an afternoon. Um, it's, uh, I always come away energized from our times together. We do this once a month, and uh, many of you are here uh, for uh, repeat performances. We've got another one coming up on Sunday, March 13th with uh, Alejandro Mujia and Stephen Kessler, uh, who will be reading uh, for us again via Zoom. That will be our, what, 20... Third, I guess, and uh, uh, then the one after that will be our second anniversary of this, which is quite. Simple. It's funny too, Robert. I was thinking, you know, I think I was the one of the first people. I had a reading scheduled with you guys, and when COVID came out, and I think I was the first one we did on Zoom. You were, you were, yeah. You helped us inaugurate with our. Um, uh, getting I don't us, think uh, I was ready, but <laughs> <laughs> you helped us start up the learning curve. It was uh, yeah. quite something. Hard to believe you've done, you've done that many since. Yeah, well, it's amazing. And they're all there, as I said, on YouTube uh, for you to check out. Uh, and uh, if you have more uh, need for more information, please contact John Lowey. He's the dean of our group. He's been doing this for a long time. He was actually... Uh, the local head for the Monterey Bay chapter of the National Writers Union. Uh, and John is the driving force. He can't be with us today, unfortunately. We're also sponsored by Old Capital Books, uh, which is located on Alvarado in Monterey. Uh, two wonderful folks who own that, and they're actually putting together a Monterey Poetry Festival coming up in April. And uh, so we'll have more news for you about that. Please stay in touch via Facebook. Please like us if you'd like to like us. And also please do check in on our YouTube channel. And as I asked before, uh, if you'd like to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, there's no charge for any of this wonderful poetry, except simply a, uh, a taking of some of your time, which I think is returned to you in full measure uh, by the great poetry that we share today. So I wanna thank Heidi and uh, Cynthia again for opening their hearts to us and sharing their work and invite you all to come back via Zoom uh, March 13th and uh, we'll keep the magic rolling. Thank you very much.